Coming up on First at Four, the mother of a toddler whose death is being considered the result of abuse appears in court. And some neighbors in Leslie County say they are struggling to obtain clean drinking water. Plus, we are tracking showers to return for the middle of this week. All those details coming up as Mountain News First at Four starts right now. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News First at Four. Good afternoon, I'm Steve Hensley. First at four, the mother of a toddler whose death is being investigated as a case of abuse had her preliminary hearing in a Middlesboro courtroom today. The hearing was to determine probable cause for the current charges against Erica Lawson and review her bond. Lawson waived her preliminary hearing and that sends the case to the grand jury. Commonwealth's attorney Lisa Fugit says that she is confident the case will be in front of a grand jury this month. And based upon what I know from the, the case and from the officers, I fully expect that grand jury to enhance the current charges. The Commonwealth's attorney says that the community support for this case has helped everyone stay on top of it. WYMT's Madison Carmouche was in the courtroom today and she'll have more tonight at 6. Some in Leslie County are searching for answers while they continue having trouble assessing clean, accessing clean water. Some people living in the Yedis community do not have access to city water, so they have used water from wells and creeks. Even with some filtration, the water comes out with an orange tint. Gardner Turner, who lives in Yedis, says they have to be careful how they use it. Uh, we only use our well water for bathing and washing clothes pretty much and dishes and hate to do that but uh, we either buy our water or we get it from family members by filling up jugs. Officials with the Leslie County Water District tell us they hope to get funding to serve people in the Udis community. We'll have more about this tonight at 6 as well. The annual WSGS Hospice Radio Day just wrapped up in downtown Hazard. People were able to call in or stop by the radio station today to donate to Bluegrass Care Navigators to help those in the community. Executive Director of the Hazard Office for Bluegrass Care Navigators, Tiffany Holland, says there are many different ways the organization helps patients. What we love to do is um, support our patients in our community um, in ways that uh, a lot of people don't see, such as um, providing, as we spoke about on the radio earlier, um, pet, pet programs and therapy programs. Holland also says the organization loves teaming up with WSGS for the Radio Day and has had great support. Well, the weather not too bad on your Tuesday, especially compared to yesterday. No storms today, but we are tracking a few showers across the mountains at this hour. Here's a look at the radar, and as you can see, nothing too widespread, but a few spotty showers out there right now. And McCreary County also stretching into Whitley County, also Bell County, not too far away from downtown Middlesboro at this hour. So watching out for a few more showers as well in portions of Letcher County, just to the north of Whitesburg, also just to the east of Dorton and Pike County as well and a few more spotty sprinkles on US 23 near Norton as well. Here's a live look from downtown Pikeville. As you can see, cloud cover continues. That current temperature at 77 degrees. Most of us right now actually below average in the middle to upper 70s, 78 in Jackson, 77 for London, up to 80 for Wayne, also Irvin at this hour. But really, we are below average. And once you factor in the dew point, it feels even nicer out there. Some drier air on Tuesday, but we are tracking some changes as early as tomorrow as more showers and storms are possible late Wednesday, also into your Thursday, and some of the rain could be a little bit heavy in some places as well. Much more details on that, plus your full seven-day forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Steve? All right, Cameron, thank you. The new school year is upon us, and many schools are still on the hunt for new teachers. The teacher shortage made headlines during the pandemic, but as CBS's Christian Benavidez tells us, it's an ongoing problem. Job seekers were a welcome sight at this recent employment fair in Stockton, California. The school district is trying to attract new teachers with signing bonuses of up to $10,000 and six-figure salaries. 
they're just unheard of as far as the amounts of money that we're offering. The teacher shortage that peaked during the pandemic continues in many parts of the country, including Florida, where there are more than 5,000 unfilled positions. The health of the teaching profession is at or near its lowest point in the past 50 years. Melissa Arnold Lyon co-authored a report on the state of the teaching profession and says money is a big reason why. A study last year found average teacher salaries have actually dropped almost 8% when adjusted for inflation. According to the National Education Association, Florida ranks 48th in pay, with teachers making an average of $51,000 a year. At the same time, teachers feel overworked and underappreciated. Many more teachers are saying that if they could do it all again, they would not become teachers. Many more teachers are saying that the stress of the job is not worth it. Not only are teachers leaving the profession, many young people don't want to join it. A nonprofit in Philadelphia is trying to change that with a program allowing college students like Shamar Long to become teaching fellows. I love that I kind of get to have the opportunity to speak to students that may not have ever had a black male teacher um, in a classroom. So far, 450 fellows have gone through the program and three out of four have become educators. Cristian Benavides, CBS News, Fort Lauderdale. Data from the Kentucky Educator Placement Service shows that nearly a dozen open positions were posted just yesterday alone for schools throughout eastern Kentucky. The Supreme Court froze a lower court ruling barring the government from regulating so-called ghost guns as firearms today. Ghost guns are homemade firearms, basically. They have no serial numbers, don't require background checks, and provide no transfer records for easy traceability. Last year, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and Explosives updated its regulations to define the kits as firearms so the government could better track them. Abortion remains a key issue among Americans a year after the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. A new CNN poll conducted by SSRS found 64% of adults disapprove of the Dobbs ruling. That number is unchanged from last year. What has changed is how important the issue is to people. 29% of Americans say they would only vote for a candidate who shares their view on abortion. 26% said the same one year ago. In Ohio, folks are voting today in a special election on a proposal that would boost the threshold needed to amend the Buckeye State's constitution from a simple majority to 60 percent. Richard Solomon has that story. The polling locations are ready for a busy Tuesday because a simple yes or no answer could decide how the state constitution can be amended in the future and it's called Issue 1. It's even gained the intention of Reverend Tim Ahrens, senior minister of First Congregational Church. So what it is is a power grab by those who are in the legislature to try to hold power forever. If passed, Issue 1 would require 60% of votes to pass an amendment to the state constitution. And anyone trying to add an amendment on the ballot would need signatures from 5% of voters in all 88 counties. Just last week, in one of their last efforts, dozens of faith leaders spoke out against issue one, saying it's an attempt to silence voters. To vote yes will be detrimental to people who are not white and middle class. Anyone else is, is left behind by a yes vote. 